Hey guys, um, sorry I'm late today. I, uh, well, I slept in all the way until 8.30. Almost 8.30 anyway. And then I had to deal with the dogs. And I just woke up now. So, you guys just keep getting me right as I wake up. Uh, anyway, I apologize for the for being an hour late today. So we've got what we're going to do for a dice game. A basic dice game, if you just do the proficiency roll, the dice proficiency roll, and the dice proficiency roll with investigation check, and you don't get the DC 15 on the perception, and you don't do sleight of hand at all, and you have no proficiency in dice or investigation, and you have no intelligence, well, a 10 in intelligence, then you have a 50-50 chance of retaining half of your bet or losing everything. I mean, that's about where your odds are with no proficiencies at all. Um, and that's okay. You have a 0% chance of tripling up if you have no proficiencies of, at all and you're only gambling with copper. Uh, as soon as you bar start gambling with silver, you need at least some proficiency because you just lose too much. Um, the break even point is a plus eight. This DC 29, that's where you break even. So if you can get that to a 50 50, then you're suddenly doing a lot better. Um, I think that's about where I would call it winning. So, if you're betting copper, you want a plus 8 total. Whether you get some of that from minusing 4 or 8 using perception, or you get some of that from doubling your dice proficiency using sleight of hand. Why is that 17? Hmm. We're going to knock that down to 16. Uh, any of these don't... How you get it doesn't matter. Uh, so if you have a dice proficiency, you're getting a plus 2 because you're level 1. You have an intelligence of, say, plus 2 because you've got a 14 or a 15 in it. Maybe a plus 1. And that throws you at a plus 5 total. You got investigation proficiency. That throws you at a plus seven. You're pretty close. If you can hit that perception, you can win with copper. You can do okay with copper. Uh, but yeah, you're looking to need something somewhere to do okay. You need at least a plus eight to really start winning. Um, yeah. That's about how it is. And I think that's fair. That means most people will lose. But even with a little bit of proficiency in investigation or a little bit of intelligence, you have a lower chance of losing everything. You probably won't lose it all. I think that's fair. A uh, little bit of perception can knock you up pretty decently. You get a 19 on your DC perception. Knock this down to a 13. 
when you're rolling two d20s, even if you don't have proficiency in anything else, um, 13 is going to be easy to hit. So, in fact, if you can get that 19 perception, you're on the winning point. You're at the point where you could win. You're 50 50 for breaking even, but you can get up a decent bit more. You could even quadruple your money. So, yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think this is pretty fair. But that's only if you're playing with copper. As soon as you jump up to silver. And especially if you're betting gold, you better have decent amount. So. Now, this works a lot better for my world's economy. Where I did 32 copper equaling 1 silver and 25 silver equaling one gold. Because the silver and copper in my game is worth so much more than it is in actual D&D. So the copper in this game, before turning into a silver, could be worth, you can bet 32 copper and quadruple up and that's actually that'll actually buy you something whereas betting and i think 10 would be the max i'd allow as a dm betting 10 copper what if you quadruple up you get four silver total from winning you get 40 copper in that game it's 40 copper isn't much in mine 40 copper is a decent little bit That'll buy you your food for a while. Um, as far as silver goes, when you're betting silver, then you're actually, like, talking real money. 25 silver, relatively to how I tried to work the economy, is worth almost $1,000. Each silver is worth 40 So if you go in and you bet 20 silver, that's 800 bucks generally you double that great good for you now you've got 1600 bucks that's that's a big win for a normal person silver would be a big deal for most people um and i think that's that this works out with a plus 5 i think that would be what most people would bet and then you start getting to the real tables where they're betting thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars and everything goes through the roof so yeah and that's how we're gonna do dice I'm gonna move dice up over here One right there. We're gonna copy dice, paste dice. Move dice further over to get away from that. And cool. Now we're gonna do chess. Now, with chess, chess is going to be just one game. You versus one other person. So. I don't think we're going to allow the opportunity to quadruple your money. That's definitely going to be an out. So 
Sorry about that. Um, so, chess. Stress is a chess is a game of strategy and foresight. Okay. Let's look up how long a ch chess game takes. How long does a competitive chess match?
Alright, I'm going to make a chess game last two hours. All right. <clears throat> so, chess game lasts two hours. Dice game lasts four hours. In the chess game, I will allow um, gambling, of course. Copper, silver, and gold, for sure. Let's start with it chess proficiency role that is competitive Okay, we're setting this up to make it so that the games are basically bet by the piece, not a winner take all. That actually does give us a lot more room, but I still want the chess games to feel realistic, so I'm only going to allow two hours. I'm only going to allow the money to double. Uh, that feels fair to me. Um, and yeah, if you're doubling up, it should be hard. Now, because it's two hours, if you play chess twice, and you bet, I don't know, 32 copper, your second game, I'd allow you to take your winnings from the first, and bet in the second as well. So I'd allow you to bet 64 copper. If you double up twice, that's the same as quadrupling up. You just have to hit this twice. Same amount of time, same gains. I think I like this. That's how we're going to play it. Yeah. So. Let's find all of these dice and change them to chess. This is going to be our general format for 
all of it. Uh, but we're going to change what skills we use. So, dice is done. We've got three skills. Now that I know how I want to do it, I think these are our three skills, investigation, insight, and history. I'm considering stealth only because I think that stealth would be, uh, did I change this as well? I'm not, I'm going to have to. I think that stealth would be interesting for like hiding your next move, but I think deception would work better for that. Yeah. Yeah, deception would work better. History. Now the thing is, all of these are competitive. I like this. Okay, so this is where our history check's going to be. History comes next. Now with a history check, you've got intelligence, history, and chess. So that gives you three points that you can bet up. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, Rick. I wasn't looking at the chat. Um. Yeah, I just looked at the chat now. I apologize, Rick. Cool. I'm glad you found something that'll work for you. Uh, I hope it does. Let me know how it goes. Um, back to this. So, history is going to modify your opponent's role. So let's take all of these out. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just, I don't pay attention when I'm on a roll and I don't realize someone's watching. Um, so I think the 19 we're going to make give your opponent disadvantage on future rolls. Uh, we're going to make I really don't. Um, 
I just I enjoy streaming. I this makes it so that I actually do the planning that I'm supposed to do for my games. And I spend a limited amount of time each day doing it. Um, and frankly, you're probably the only person who actually comes on and watches regularly. So, right now, I don't have people watching. Uh, Alright. So, history. What will we give... I like the idea of history modifying your opponent's hand because this lets it, this makes it so that in my mind you're using lessons from the past to see what your opponent's already doing. Yeah, and that's basically what it is, Rick. Alright. So, I've got give your opponent disadvantage on future rolls. Yeah, I'm glad I don't do a song request thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, and I haven't had any trolls yet, so that's been cool. Chess proficiency does not apply to any of your opponents. Chess proficiency does not imply to your opponent's investigation check. Okay, so the first one takes away investigation, which is what we're using as the next check. Yeah. Yeah, Rick, uh, I do know what you mean. I never considered. I, I'm not a very musical person. I wish I was more musical. Um, but, uh, I'm just not. So, this is investigation, and your opponent may have already knocked your dice proficiency off of it, may be giving you disadvantage, I don't know.
but this is for basically seeing like what they're doing. Yeah, I don't have much time to play and plan. And I haven't taken time to explore new music. Catherine will sometimes be playing music. Last night she was doing music stuff while I was uh I was reading a book. Now, this is insight. Wisdom. Chess. Chess. Okay. Now the interesting thing about this is I'm leaving intelligence as the two modifying roles but I have wisdom as the uh, as actually applying towards the score. By the way, this is not competitive in dice anymore. Okay. Now, as for the DCs. Alright, so the total score is competitive. It's going to be compared to your opponent's score at at DC 0 on the competitive score. You win some, you lose some. We're cool. Um, Twenty five per cent more. Fifty per cent more. Seventy five per cent more. Um, so we're going to go in increments of four again. I think that this is fair.
3 quarters is 75%. Okay, so we all know this is competitive. Um, so these DCs are based on how well you did against the other player. Plus 16, 16 over the other player, you doubled your money. 16 behind the other player, you lost everything. Um, in a way, this makes the rolls matter more I think but I digress so you're gonna want to bet in increments that you can divide by four um, 25 would not be great because we're going by quarters here uh, so but if you don't we'll figure something out um, standard NPC competitor Now see, do I want the competitor to also make the history check and the investigation check? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Plus one to wisdom, plus one to intelligence. This gives you slightly above average in both categories.
Okay, so you're competing against someone who has proficiency in all of these areas and has a plus one to wisdom and a plus one to intelligence. Their proficiency will be at your level. Should I do it at their level, at your level? Ah, their proficiency will be based on the bet. Their proficiency is based on the bet. So they get proficiency for the chess roll. Um, so they're getting a plus two. They're getting proficiency for history and chess. Let's say we're betting copper. They're getting proficiency for history and chess, and they have a plus one intelligence, so they're getting a plus three here. Down here, same thing, plus three, or plus five to each of these, and plus five here. Um, it's 2d20. The rolls will say even out at a DC zero. On average, you're both going to hit 21 with the rolls, so that doesn't make much difference. And they've got a total of a plus seven insight and chess to the check. Now you could have double proficiency, but chances are you won't to any of these. I mean, you have to be a rogue or a bard, I think, to get expertise so you can get the extra proficiencies. Um. Now, their chance of getting investigation, let's, let's look at investigation. Their chance of getting this at level one, or at copper, is 50-50. No, they have a slight advantage on getting this. And they have... I mean, when you're betting gold, they have a huge advantage to getting that. I think we're going to up these DCs so that everyone's just not always getting this. Because they'd have a plus 13 at 100 gold. And so would you, hopefully, but still. It becomes really difficult now to get that plus eight. Um, they won't be able to do to get the plus eight at even at gold. They're getting. They won't be able to get the plus eight to their competitive score. Um, and I want to up these as well. Yeah, 
Honestly, chess is, uh, let's change that one D four of the following skills. Okay, this changes it a lot. They get proficiency in 1d4 of the following skills. You roll 1d20 for each skill. The highest gets proficiency first, lowest last. It goes in order. So they may have proficiency in them, their chances are they're going to get proficiency in two or three of them and not in the last one. I'm going to lower these DCs because now that makes things more viable again. So there's a good chance that they'll have proficiency in one of these and they're going to get a plus one anyway. But we'll make it an 11. We'll make it a 13 because you would be irritated if you had chess proficiency and it didn't apply to your investigation check. I know you. You're the player. Um, but still, that's better than having your chess proficiency not apply to any future checks, which is a 17. And this is a 21. This still gives... That's a 23. This is an 18 now. This still gives, uh, if you have proficiency in both, you've got a low proficiency, you're getting a plus. Let's say you're level one, you're getting a plus two, plus two, and normal, and you have an intelligence of 14, another plus two, that's plus six. You've got a good chance to knocking off chess proficiencies for future checks. I'm not sure how I like this because I do like it in general, but what I dislike about it is that um, it feels like you can, what's the word, it feels like it's going to make it, might make it not fun if you get unlucky and your opponent gets lucky. So. And I don't want to make it not fun. Like, I don't want to take away all these bonuses from my players. Um, because that's why they're doing this check. But at the same time, I don't want to make it so that they can't take it away from their from the enemy. Uh, so, I don't know. I might change what history does. I like how I did investigation. 20 and 30, I think, is still fair. Even if you have proficiency in only one of them or whatever, hard to get this bonus.
or Okay, and then it comes down here, we've got the insight check, and we've got this difference, which you guys bet the same amount of money, and this determines how much you win versus how much you lose. You were destroyed, you lose everything, you win it all. Uh, yeah, this is what we're going to do for chess, for gambling, for the future. Chess is done. And so is the video. Uh, Rick, I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. And if anyone else tunes in and sees this, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this will help you out.